Welcome back to the Junk Man's Adventures. I'm the Junk Man, and today we're going to look at this mystifying thing called the carburetor. We're going to look at how it functions, how each of the parts in the carburetor functions, and how that affects jetting. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have learned something to diagnose your own carburetor problems. What I have here is a rig set up to demonstrate the very basic functions of a carburetor. Let's identify them using a real carburetor. This end is where the air filter clamps on or it goes to the air box. That's represented here. This end of the carburetor would be bolted to the intake that goes to the engine. That's represented by the vacuum cleaner hose here. This cup with the red dye in it represents the carburetor bowl right here. And inside the cup that goes up into through this lump of clay represents either the main jet or the pilot jet because they both do the same thing so I'm just representing one here that goes up into the throat of the carburetor which is represented here and this lump of clay that you see here that's kind of curved also represents as if you could look down this carburetor you can see that this opening it narrows. What this is called is a venturi. And what we're going to demonstrate here is the venturi effect. And what it's going to allow is it's the venturi effect is going to speed up the air as it's going through this tube just as it does in a carburetor. It's going to create a low pressure area up here. And because the outside atmospheric pressure is pressing on the water, it's going to shove it up the tube and into the vacuum cleaner or in a real carburetor into the engine which is creating vacuum by the piston going up and down. Also what I have set up here is a vacuum gauge, a liquid filled vacuum gauge into a chamber that I built. This is actually, I built this myself for sinking uh, multi-carb engines and I'll explain more about this at the end of the video because it really does ha have anything to do here. All I'm using it right here is to demonstrate that we are pulling a vacuum and I also want to show by creating a vacuum leak which you'll see here in this little uh, barb fitting that I drilled into the back how that affects your mixture and the ability to pull the liquid up through that little tube and into the engine. So let's turn it on and see it work. Here we are turning on the vacuum and see the needle on the vacuum gauge moving. You can also see the red liquid which is water with red food coloring moving up through the brass tube and atomizing within the air moving through our makeshift venturi. Here we are creating a vacuum leak, and you can see the gauge move as we open and close the valve, letting air into and out of the chamber. On to our first animation. As you can see, we're at idle speed because the carburetor slide is closed, and all the air has to go through that small little channel indicated by the blue line to mix with the fuel coming up through the pilot jet and mixing and going into the intake. Now I made an entirely individual video on this mixture setting alone and you can go find that on my YouTube channel. So let's move along to when the carburetor slide starts to open. As you can see now, the carburetor slide is starting to open to allow fuel through the throat of the carburetor to pull the fuel through the pilot jet out the pilot orifice to mix in the throat of the carburetor. At this point, the idle mixture screw is doing nothing for the jetting of the carburetor. Now as the carburetor slide opens further still, the pilot jet is now flowing at its maximum rate, and now the jet needle is now metering the fuel through the main jet at this throttle opening. So the jet needle clip position is now affecting the mixture at this throttle opening, either higher or lower. Now the carburetor is at full throttle. The pilot jet is now not affecting the mixture whatsoever and now the jet needle has opened the main jet 
all the way so the main jet can flow its maximum flow rate. So now the main jet is the only operation that is in play here at wide open throttle. Well in this diagram we're showing the enrichment circuit, also known by some as the choke. Uh, a choke is actually a butterfly valve that actually limits the amount of air that can flow through the carburetor throat. It does the same thing as enrichment, just it controls the air and not the fuel. In this case, when the enrichment plunger opens, it opens that passageway for air and the fuel to flow and bypass the slide of the carburetor in cold starting situations. Now, there's another type of carburetor out there, the Keyhen FCR, and I'm going to pass this video over to Matt at How To Motorcycle Repair because he has a good little clip on how a FCR carburetor works with its accelerator pump and its hot start, so I'm going to pass it over to him. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. So the junk man has asked me to put together a little video for you guys that explains how the hot start works and also how the accelerator pump works on one of these Keyhin FCR carburetors, which is what you find on these four strokes. I got an 06 uh, YZ250F over here and got an 08 KTM 450 SXF over there. Both of them are in for carb clean and jetting. So um, let's take this over to the workbench and I'll show you um, what it's all about. All right guys, so here's the whole mechanism that operates the accelerator pump. Basically, here's your throttle that your cables move. This is your throttle wheel. And there's a cam on the back side of this and it pull, pushes down on this, this arm here. Basically, there's a rod that runs down here and pushes on a diaphragm and then it squirts fuel inside the uh, intake. So let's go ahead and give it a squirt. So that's how it works. All right, so why do you need an accelerator pump? Well, basically, uh, these high-performance engines have large carburetors. You whack the throttle open, right? You get this rush of air. It causes a lean condition, and to comp compensate for that, um, you have an accelerator pump which covers uh, covers up that lean bog and basically that's that's how that works alright guys so the hot start is basically a plunger like this it's cable operated and you want to use it when your bike is really hot and it won't start or if you uh, dump it in a turn and you pick up your bike and it's probably spilled fuel inside the intake track and it's too rich to start so you need to lean it out that's basically what this does it's a plunger that moves exposes exposes a port and allows more air to get into the uh, fuel air mix leaning it out so this guy like I said is cable operated it sits in here in the top of the carb and there's a port here so if when it opens it'll draw air from under the top carb cover here and it dumps it right here ahead of the slide so it basically it's basically a vacuum leak uh, you're introducing air into the system in hopes of leaning it out and getting your bike to start all right guys well i hope you enjoyed that video hopefully the junk man can link to a playlist that i have that has about 10 videos that'll help you with the four stroke carburetor all right guys see you in the next video well, I hope you learned a little something in this video about carburetor jetting and how a basic carburetor functions. This is universal across many different types of carburetors. They all have these same kind of circuits. And once you understand what each circuit does, you can jet your motorcycle or find out where and what adjustments you need to make to solve a problem within that throttle opening range. So... Until next time, I'm the Junk Man, and like my Facebook page, check out my Twitter, subscribe, and also visit some of my affiliate links. They help pay for this content, and so I can create more. But, of course, you never have to do that. Just come on back for the next video, and thanks for watching.